In 2011 and retired from work, I decided to return to flying after a three year break. And in 2012, it was time to purchase my own aeroplane. I was initially interested in a Trigear Europa and did find one for sale, but unfortunately it wasn't as good as I wanted, so the sale didn't proceed. The next aeroplane I looked at was a Glass Star. There was one for sale, but it was situated in Aberdeen and I decided against travelling there. After chatting with a good friend of mine who had won the King's Cup trophy in an RV6, he suggested I look for an RV. There were two for sale on A4s, a RV9A and an RV6. Inquiries took me to see an unpainted RV6 at Little Grandison. This 6 had been flying for only two years and had only 75 hours on the engine and airframe. She hadn't been painted and lacked a transponder and other avionics, but with its low hours it seemed well worth buying. Having test flown it with its owner, I came back with the usual RV grin. Those of you who haven't flown in an RV, the first flight is called the $50,000 trial flight, as once flown in one you will want to have your own. I purchased the RV6 in August 2012. I had significant tailwheel time in a Jodel, but transferring to the 6 took a few hours. Thanks must go to my mentor Dave Edwards for this. Dave was also my instructor who did my tailwheel conversion course many years ago. The first job was to get a spray to my design. After numerous phone calls, I ended up using Keith Bebbington at Slape. I flew the 6 there in October and collected the aircraft one month later. The painted aeroplane was fantastic. I was ever so pleased with the standard of Keith's work completed to his usual high professional standard. It was great to see the RV painted and to share with everyone the amazing lines of the Tailwheel RV6. Still to come with the avionics. I added a Garmin transponder and a Garmin Area 550. Having flown and owned the RV6 for eight years, I have to say it is my favorite out of the 25 types I have flown. Monday the 11th of March 2013 proved to be a bad day. Taxiing back from the LA hangar to the main hangar, I taxied into the 27 hole short sign. The sign was out of view on the right hand side of the aircraft and the first I knew about it was the propeller chewing up the sign. After discussing the incident with two engineers, it was agreed that the engine should be shock tested. I was annoyed and pretty upset over something that could have been avoided. I was then introduced to an inspector who has looked after the aeroplane ever since. Peter Clayton has become my source of encouragement and advice with the aircraft. The engine was removed and sent to Nicholson McLaren for shock testing. On strip down they found nothing wrong but a problem serviced with an AD regarding reassembly. It required new roller cam followers but these could not be fitted as the crankcase had to be modified. I had to wait another month while the crankcase was returned to the States for the modification to be completed. After three months the engine was returned, it was reinstalled with Peter Clayton's help and back into the air. Golf Uniform November Echo Sierra is powered by a Superior 0320 with a fixed pitch Cessnich propeller. It cruises at 140 knots using 27 litres an hour. It is a beautiful aeroplane to fly and very well coordinated in its controls. It doesn't have an autopilot so requires constant attention. Landings can be quite interesting as if slightly too fast in the flare it can sometimes produce a Barnes-Wallace effect. It is so important to have a stabilised approach for a good landing. Even after several good landings, it still surprises me with a small bounce or two. It is such an interesting aeroplane to fly. To be able to fly around North Wales and Snowdon and to return back to Shobden in just over an hour is amazing. Just strapping into my RV makes me very privileged to fly what must be one of the best LAA aircraft in the UK. 
In June 2018, I planned a flight around North Wales to fly over Snowdon and down the west coast of Wales. The weather forecast for the trip was excellent. Blue skies, a few clouds and light winds. I departed early in the morning as the temperature later in the day was to be above 30 degrees C. I headed north past Welshpool, aiming for Colwyn Bay. Approaching the coast I turned towards Llandudno and the Menai Straits with the Snowdonia range to my left. On reaching the Menai Strait, I turned towards Snowdon and passed the peak of the mountain on my left. You can even see the mountain train making its way towards the summit. After Snowdon, there was no need for a map as Cardigan Bay stretched out in front of me. Along the coast we passed Lambeda, Tawin and Abadavi before turning for home north of Aberystwyth. On landing, we had covered 187 nautical miles with a maximum altitude of 4,500 feet and an average speed of 130 knots. It had taken 1 hour 26 minutes, including the landing circuit. I would recommend any pilot to fly any one of the van's types of aeroplanes. You won't be disappointed. <laughs>